So I feel a need to sort of start this out by asking, are you all right? Like, are you doing okay? There's, there's all this craziness happening outside right now. How do you feel? You know, David, when you asked it at first, I thought, you know, I get asked that a whole lot. People who know my work, they go, are you all right? And uh, no, I'm not. I'm not on any level. I, w I wasn't all right before this, but now, uh, you know, I'm an extreme extrovert, and it is, uh, I don't know about you, but it is very, very difficult because I travel all the time. I stand up in front of people and entertain, and, and then I direct, and so I like, I like people, you know, and uh, I, I'm okay with just writing in the mornings for a few hours and then, and then being with people. I like the gym, you know? Yeah. I miss it all. No, I'm right there with you. I, I feel it. And this past weekend, Memorial Day, that was pretty rough. It's the roughest it's been in a while because uh, I just wanted to be out with friends and there's no chance of that. You have a live reading coming up of your play, Sorted Lives, and the sequel, uh, Sorted Lives Marriage, uh, coming up on the 31st, which is so exciting. Uh, you have a bunch of your original cast members joining you uh, for the readings. Um, so I'll let you know that I, I went back and looked at the Sorted Lives movie as well as some of your other work this past weekend to sort of prepare for this. And what really stood out to me was how much you stay with these characters or these characters stay with you. Like they're constantly popping up in your work over and over again. Um, what is it about them that you can't seem to escape, I'm wondering? Well, it, honestly, to tell you the truth, it was not intentional. I, 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 when I wrote Sorted Lives, the play, I thought it was just gonna be a play. And then, uh, you know, Bo Bridges was actually very instrumental and he's joining us again for this uh, live read of Sorted Lives. Uh, he said, you, you need to make this a movie. He had done my movie, Daddy's Dying, Who's Got the Will? And he said, and if you do, I wanna wear that black bra. <laughs> so he chose his role and he was the first to come on board. And so when the movie opened, I mean, we made that movie for a half a million dollars. Who knew that it was gonna just catch on like that? And so it was fans who kept saying, we want more, we want more. And, and they didn't have to twist my arm too much because I do, I'm very seduced by those characters. I love writing them. And uh, so they've been with, we, we've been doing this <laughs> way too long. I, sort of Lives the Play opened in 1996. Wow. So, yeah, That's and the amazing. movie opened in 2000. So it's, we're 20 years old now, the movie. What is it about writing for character actors that's so satisfying? Writing for actors like Dale or like Leslie Jordan, who you've done a number of productions with as well. Uh, and it's, it's, it's mostly, it's Southern character actors, mostly. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we, we've got Caroline Ray and Bonnie Bedelia who, who joined us who are not Southern. Um, I don't know, I gravitate to those women in my life, especially, not, not, I'm sorry, Leslie, I didn't mean to <laughs> include you in that, but, <laughs> but, uh, but I gravitate to my mother and my aunts and all those, those sort of, I call them good crazy, the good crazy in my life that I grew up with. And uh, so it wasn't like anything crazy intentional. They just seduced me. Those, those, those characters and those actors seduce me more than, than you know, the, the youngins. And, and when you start working with someone like Leslie Jordan and Dale and Beth and, and Bonnie, and you hear their voices in your head as you're writing. Wow. So you, you cheat. You know what I mean? It's like, there's, it's a cheat. Yes, it, it's like, I don't have to, when I go to direct these people, I do very little. I just like point them, point them in the right direction. They hear what I hear. Um, obviously you're a guy who grew up in the South. Right. Yourself. What is it, like, what is it about that that continues to haunt you? I'm not gonna ask your age, because I just think that's a silly question. Well, I don't, I mean, you can ask my age. I'm 62, all you have to do is go on the internet. It's right there. Um, so, um, okay, so now at 62, you're still writing about your upbringing in a lot of ways. Like, what, nice. what is it that haunts you about the South, specifically? Well, I mean, you look at, I, I look at the South and, and there have been some changes and I'm really glad and I celebrated a lot of those changes in a very sordid wedding. So, and I wanted to do that, but there's still a lot of bigotry there. There's a lot of, um, of damage that I have that I grew up with. You know, I'm a, I'm a son of a preacher. My dad was a Southern Baptist preacher and my mom was the high school drama teacher. So I, I had this weird, <laughs> odd household of just 
explains a lot, I think. Yes, and, and you know, and my mother's family was borderline crazy, good crazy. So um, I, I feel like that I, when I'm done with that, when I'm done with those stories, when they don't need to be told anymore, I'll yeah. stop. What's your relationship like with your mom? What does that relationship mean to you in terms of your own artistry? Well, I lost my mother May the 24th, um, 19 years ago. I, it was just her, her, her death day anniversary, yeah. but she's still the single biggest influence on my life and my career. And I, in, in Six Characters in Search of a Play, I talked about that. It still makes me very emotional to talk about my mom because when I came out at a really late age, she was my first ally. Her, her response was Luttrell's response. In, in, in Sorted Lives. I mean, I just lifted our relationship and put it into that play. And uh, so I, I always have, um, my heart and my soul is connected to her. And I still feel like she speaks to me in a weird way through my work. Sure. And um, I, just, I wouldn't be doing this. This would not, you know, this would not be. Hang on a second, I'll show you something. Okay. This is my mom. Oh, um, look at that hair. Wow. That's a, now, 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 the hair was modified over the year. <laughs> but, but I do, I love that picture because that, well, that's some Texas hair. Did she, did she see Storted Lives? She did. She did. did she my dad do? did too. It was, it was, it was um, exhilarating and horrifying all at the <laughs> same time. Uh, because they, they went to the USA Film Festival premiere of it in Dallas. Okay. And my mother even though I think she was appalled a lot at, at the, 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 the subjects. And, and she, what, when she saw Sorted Lives, the play, yeah. I, she didn't see it on stage, but I, we had videotaped it. And she okay. said, why must you continue to expose this family to the world? <laughs> <laughs> and, and so uh, when they, but, but then I always say she was reluctantly proud. <laughs> so okay. they came to, um, to uh, to see the the movie at this and my dad you know and, and my ex in laws are I was married to Rosemary Alexander Doctor Eve's and and Wardell's daughter and Doctor Eve takes her top off and sorted lives and my parents had met Newell and Rosemary many many times when I was married to the, uh, Kelly and so I thought oh my God I mean because all you can do is sit there and sure. see the movie through their eyes yeah that's what happens so. Um, I was just talking to Olivia Newton-John right before, and she said, sit him by me, sit him by me, I'll take care of it. So I thought, well, maybe if I just sit him by Olivia Newton-John, at least my dad will be distracted. So after, after the movie, I asked my dad, well, are you okay? And he said, I will never be able to look Rosemary in the eyes again. <laughs> that was that was his review. So tell us what we can expect from the from the live reading. Uh, oh yes, yeah, so that's why we're here, right? We yeah. got I always. There's always sidetracking involved. Well, I'm so excited about this. First of all, as you know, I would not have a career if it weren't for theater. And uh, we started the Del Shores Foundation uh, about a year ago, but we had to put everything on hold because the Del Shores Foundation is uh, we, we mentor and help LGBTQ southern storytellers wow. okay. find a way to tell their stories so we we but we put everything on hold we have a lot of um theater uh partners that were basically just going to help us get the word out about our events about finding uh storytellers and then i started communicating with them with, during the pandemic and everybody is in trouble uh all theaters i mean you know because it's all come to a halt. And so yeah. these little theaters are suffering so greatly. And I thought, what can I do? And with Emerson and with Stuart Bell and with Ed Decker at New Conservatory, where I premiered This Side of Crazy, started brainstorming. And I thought, you know what? Let me just call all my buddies, my sorted lives. It's, it's a, it, it, we're celebrating 20 years and let's just see if they will come together. And nobody said no. Wow. It was just every single one of them. And I, I just kept calling and calling. And within 48 hours, I had a combination of the movie, uh, the series, and assorted wedding cast, and a little bit of the tour. Debbie Holiday was never 
a Bitsy May in anything, but uh, except on tour, she she did play the role on tour. So so that everybody came together, or they're coming together to do this live read because we all love and support theater. So this is going to uh, all the money raised is going to be divided equally between 23 theaters. And we also have an auction. I went through my garage. It, I, I'm telling you, I felt like a hoarder. I found so many original costumes. Wow. And so we, well, Charity Buzz is uh, putting them up for auction. And 100%, not in, none of us are taking any money. The foundation's not taking any money. 100% goes to these theaters. Delshoresfoundation.org. Delshoresfoundation.org. And it will be on my, per, my Facebook page live and on you, YouTube live. YouTube Live on the 31st, Sunday night, 5 p.m. Pacific time, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Fabulous. We'll look forward to it. Thank you so much, man. All right. Thank you.